spectrum. In this lecture, we're going to discuss the concept of the electron volt. Now, the most common unit of energy is joules, but whenever we're dealing with subatomic particles such as electrons, protons, and neutrons, as well as microscopic objects such as atoms and molecules and compounds, we essentially can't use joules because joules is a very large quantity of energy when we're dealing with the microscopic level. So for the purpose of dealing with microscopic particles such as atoms, molecules, protons, neutrons, electrons, we define the electron volt which is a unit of energy. So one electron volt is defined as the quantity of energy that is gained by one electron as it travels through a voltage difference through an electron potential difference of one volt. So when one electron or a particle that has the same charge as one electron travels through a potential difference of one volt, it is said to gain one electron volt of energy. Now, how much, it, how much joules of energy is found in one electron volt? Well, let's calculate this using the following equation. So we know when a particle is traveling through a voltage difference, the amount of change of potential energy of that particle is given by taking the charge of that particle, Q, multiplying by the voltage difference. So we know the Q of one electron is negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. And we know the voltage in this particular case is 1 volt. We multiply these two quantities and we see that the change in electric potential energy of our particle is equal to negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. So, this is the same exact quantity of energy that is gained by our particle, by the electron, in terms of kinetic energy. So it loses this quantity of potential energy and it gains this quantity of kinetic energy. So we see that one electron volt given by EV is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. So let's use this conversion and solve the following two examples. So in example one, calculate the potential difference that is needed to give a helium nucleus 150 kilo electron volts of kinetic energy. Assume that the charge on the helium nucleus is given to be 3.1 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. So in step one, we essentially have to convert electron volts into joules. So first we convert our kilo electron volts into electron volts and then we convert it to joules. So we multiply 150 kilo electron volts by 1000 electron volts in one kilo electron volt and then we multiply that by this quantity 1.6 times 10 to negative 19 joules in one electron volt. And we see that 150 kilo electron volts is equal to 2.4 times 10 to negative 14 joules. So now in step two of example one, we essentially are calculating what the potential difference is, what the voltage difference is that is required to give this helium nucleus this quantity of kinetic energy. So we know the quantity of potential energy that our molecule or atom or particle loses is equal to how much kinetic energy it gains by the conservation of energy. And this is equal to negative Q multiplied by V as we saw in this particular case. So we take this equation, rearrange it, and solve for the voltage difference. The voltage difference, or the electric potential difference, is equal to the negative of the change in kinetic energy divided by the Q. The Q in this case is given to be this quantity, and the change in K was found in this step.
So the voltage is equal to negative 2.4 times 10 to the negative 14 joules divided by 3.1 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. And we get about negative 7.7 .7 times 10 to the 4 volts. So this is the voltage difference that is required for our helium nucleus to gain this quantity of energy. Now, it's negative because our positive nucleus is traveling from a higher potential to a lower potential. Now, let's move on to step, or let's move on to example two. Calculate the velocity of an electron that has two kilo electron volts of kinetic energy. So assume that our charge of our electron is negative 1.6 times 10 to negative 19 coulombs, and the mass of that electron is 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms. So in step one, we essentially want to determine the equation that we're going to use. So once again, as we saw, as we saw in this case, the change in kinetic energy is equal to negative change in electron potential energy. So our kinetic energy is given by one half mass times V squared is equal to the, the negative of the change in potential energy. So we essentially want to solve for the velocity. We see the velocity is equal to the square root of two multiplied by negative change in U divided by M. Now, so in this step, we essentially converted our kilo electron volts into joules. And that's the same exact step that we will follow in this example. So we always have to convert our electron volts into joules because joules is the accepted unit for energy. So two, multi two kilo electron volts, which is what we're given, multiplied by 1,000 electron volts in one kilo electron volt, multiplied by 1.6 times 10 to negative 19 joules of energy found in one electron volt. Notice the KEVs cancel, the EV will cancel, and we're left with 3.2 times 10 to the negative 16 joules of energy. Now, to find our velocity, we simply have to plug this quantity into this equation. Now, note this will be negative because our electron loses potential energy. So this negative will go away. So we have the velocity is equal to the square root of 2 multiplied by positive 3.2 times 10 to negative 16 joules, and we divide that by the mass of our electron, and we get a velocity of approximately 2.7 times 10 to the 7 meters per second.